I think building a relationship with people is the most important and and having that uh, uh, trusting and open relationship where I can say yeah I don't know yeah and not feel that anyone is saying well you should know well no I don't um I don't know everything and it's okay let's work it out together so it's bringing this the skills that a leader has or a more experienced person has to the table is as equally important as new people coming in and bringing in their new new and fresh ideas. And it's with that highly positive and collaborative attitude that Margaret Shepherd has really led the Science Teachers Association of New South Wales to seriously great heights. Today it's all about leadership in the science classroom. You're listening to the Physics Ed Podcast. For hundreds of ideas, free experiments and more, go to physicseducation.com.au. And now, here's your host, Ben Newsome. Yes, welcome again to another Physics Ed podcast. Yet again, we've got a big week because this time we're speaking with Margaret Shepard, who amongst being the president for the Science Teachers Association of New South Wales, she also looks after 16 schools across southwestern Sydney and is a lecturer at the Australian Catholic University for pre-service secondary science teachers. She brings a world of experience and a lot of knowledge into teaching science, but also has a whole bunch of collaborative and leadership schools which she shares with her teachers that she looks after. During this chat, we dive into several ideas around offering students opportunities to explore their world in great detail. Plus, we looked at the value of encouraging kids to take risks as well as the importance of being involved in your local teachers' association. We were also joined by Lucy Hawkins, who is a highly motivated science teacher from Clancy Catholic College, who describes just what it's like to work in a collaborative school environment that supports teachers' growth. So, there's quite a lot to cover here, so let's dive into the chat. Our guests have a lot to offer. This is the Physics Ed Podcast. I have lots of hats. I... Um, currently the president of the Science Teachers Association and we call it Staniswa because that's much more convenient. So if you hear anyone say Staniswa, you don't have to say, what was that? You'll know what it means now, so that'll help you. Staniswa is the science, te- it's an association that is run by members for members. So in other words, it's a whole bunch of teachers who volunteer their time and their expertise to help other teachers. So we run PD and we run lots of different events. Uh, it's for the whole of New South Wales, so anyone is welcome to join, and we try and cater to every single school. So we are cross-sectoral, and we're not specifically just for any one system. So hopefully anyone should feel comfortable to come along and join our association. And actually something that I've found out when I've gone to a number of your conferences, which are, by the way, incredibly fun. <laughs> they are a lot of fun. Um, the, um, what people don't realise is that you're actually there for primary teachers as well. We are. We are. We'd love to have more primary teachers come along. Mm. We've got a Canasta conference this year. Canasta is our annual national conference, and that will be running in June, July, sorry, in at Sydney University, and we have a whole program specifically for primary teachers. And interestingly enough, we get lots of secondary teachers going to the primary strand as well as the secondary strand. So whatever's running there, it's of interest to both both groups of teachers. Oh, look, this definitely came up. A number of people have um, spoken on this podcast and beyond have just said, look, just get different experiences from different people. It really matters. Um, Sometimes one of my favourite workshops are the lab tech workshops. Oh, they're unreal. They're unreal. And primary teachers would love them just as much because they could give them some ideas on how to prepare or get the, the equipment ready. And sometimes the equipment doesn't have to be very expensive, you know, $100 uh, ornate complicated science equipment. It can be bits of paper and string and, oh, you literally. know, um, plastic bottles. Straight after this, actually, Mark's going to hook me up. I'm actually presenting for the Australian Science Communicators, like, literally in an hour's time. I, went, I just need a balloon and a confess you are. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> you don't need fancy stuff at all. You don't. You and do very much the lab techs are mm. very much your friends. I mean, we've got a number of staff who are prac teachers. They're about to go out as new, new scheme teachers as well. And um, I said, look, your first friend of point of call, apart from your head teacher, is your labby. Mm. Your labby is oh, your friend. Oh, definitely. You know, I was just at a school this morning and we're planning to teach the new investigating science unit next year. Mm. And we've decided to approach it from an Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander perspective. Oh, cool. So one of our first activities is throwing boomerangs because we want the students to learn about the Bernoulli effect. Yeah. And the teacher said, well, maybe as part of the depth study, 
we could have them making paper planes. So once they've learnt the science of the Badui, yeah. they can go and make paper planes and we can have a competition about that. So from, you know, a fairly ordinary syllabus point to something that's going to be very engaging for the students. Oh, it's unreal. I mean, I love the Manila effect because the, um, the, I love doing the toilet paper with a leaf blower. I must say. Oh, yeah. can you explain that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so get yourself a paint roller, get yourself some toilet paper, give it a bit of a squeeze. And I must say, I get sick of the glue that's on the toilet roll because it's always in the way. So get rid of that. Uh, put your toilet roll onto your your uh, your paint roller and just put it just below the, um, the, t- the, the leaf blower and turn the thing on. It will go a good 10 metres. Oh. Oh, wow. It goes. And, and the idea of just showing pressure differential and okay. off it goes. Yeah. It, it's brilliant. And it grabs a big audience. And let's be honest, who doesn't like to see toilet paper being thrown around the place? <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear. Yeah. And actually, that brings up the point. I mean, what are some of the fun, most awesome lessons and science things that you've seen over the years in doing this? As a biologist, you know, I've seen the microscop- the, the world of the microbe and, and looking at the cells inside living organisms or what's even more interesting is non-living we were looking for xylem tissue mm. one year with one of the senior classes and we said oh, i wonder what we could see if we did a, a specimen of a piece of a matchstick let's, okay. cut, let's do a really thin slice of matchstick and there and lo and behold you could see this most exquisite xylem coil staring up at you wow wow yeah. Is the word. That's exactly how I felt. And so did the kids because I jumped around in joy and carried, <laughs> carried on like a treat, as I do. You know, and, and, and another one that really I find the most um, fascinating activity that I do with you, the kids is I get them when, we, when doing something on plants, go over and stand next to the window and tell me what you see. Mm. Oh, miss, there's trees out here. Oh, okay. Okay. Is that all you've got to say? Yes. Okay, fine. All right, have a sit down. Then we teach the unit. At the end of the unit, I say to them, I want you to go over to the window and tell me what you see. And they just go, oh, my goodness. I see so much now that I didn't see before. Mm. Actually, you remind me. They reminded me of a presentation that happened at Well, Gee, it must have been 10 years ago. I can't show my age. But, <laughs> but the, there was, I can't remember if it was yourself or someone who was, who was keynoting in that particular conference right before we started. I, I swear it was a Stanswell conference. That was, I want to just show you a picture. It was just a photo of uh, the backyard and there was a bit of, um, I think it was Morning Glory or a bit of balloon vine or something growing around the place. And just just note down what you can what see. What you can see. And... People initially said, I see a vine. Mm. And that was the first thing. Mm. Well, look closer. And after a while, they started to see a nest. Then they started to see the shadow mm. differentiation. Then they started to see the different colours in the vine as well. And then to explain that, mm. you can get into a lot of detail if you stop and look. I know. We have to teach our kids to do that. They don't do that so much anymore. What do you reckon is driving that? Like, it's purely out of interest. I mean, it, I, mean, they're, I mean, they're highly attentive when they're facing an iPad. I know. <laughs> That's it. That says it all. <laughs> But, yeah, I mean, I've got young kids. I have a five- and eight-year-old, and I kind of wonder myself because, I mean, one of the things I love doing is getting them out into the garden and getting their hands dirty and looking at the lettuce. And why is the lettuce? Right now the lettuce is bolting because we've had so much rain lately. Mm. And just the just the why questions and stop and look, stop and look, it, it seems like that requirement is, is needing to get older and older and older and older as the students... Yeah, oh, no. look, I think, I think age and who am I gets in the way because when they start to wonder who they're going to be as a teenager mm. and they start becoming very aware of what other people are saying, prior to that they're happy to stick their hand up and ask why and then all of a sudden, oh, someone might be judging me. They might be going, that was a clever question or that was a dumb question. You know, the, yeah, yeah. this sort of issue happens for them and so they start to... Pull back a little bit into that reserved space. Oh, I'll just wait. I'll just sit back and if I don't rock the waves or say anything, I'll just learn. 
Actually, quietly. You know what? I've seen this happen very much. As an outreach presenter, I'm in a unique position. And as yourself, because when you're running around at 17 schools, I believe, is your own job. I mean, that's enough for Sydney Catholic schools. So that's, that's <laughs> flat out. Um, oh, so, it's the best job in the world, I say. Oh, it's good fun. Like, but you get to get a snapshot of how people are reacting to a particular curriculum or syllabus mm. and whatnot. And something I have seen, especially with a highly gifted um, students in that year 9, 10 spot, um, you come in there with might be a program on forensics or whatever it might be, mm. um, and I've found that those, some of these kids just don't want to say anything unless they're not perfectly correct. correct. And yes. it's almost like getting blood out of a stone. It's like, dude, I know you know what's, you, what you want to say. Yeah. Just say it. Yeah, they're not very good risk takers mm. when people might judge them. Yeah. And that's one of our challenges as teachers, to encourage that. And sometimes in the junior classes, you know, Year 7, I always start talking about extravagant guesses. Mm. You know, I'll ask a question that really I don't expect them to know the answer to, but I want them to have a guess. You know, you know stuff. You're not, you're not a blank slate in your mind. So when I say this or show you this, what, what enters your mind? Say it. And, and by encouraging them to say all sorts of things and nothing's right and nothing's wrong, yeah. it's just putting ideas out. That hopefully then over the year encourages them that for me in my room, it's okay to say whatever you want to say because it's a safe environment. This is one of the things that, um, and um, if you've not been exposed to this, this is very real. I'm not making stuff up here. This is very much the case in the startup sector and something that happens in the Silicon Valley and all that type of thing. Because what actually happens is uh, there's a group like IDEO and Y Combinator and all these things that get highly you know, you know, business that are on a serious trajectory is to start thinking so widely that nothing can be wrong for this five minutes. In fact, there is no, there is there no, is no wrong. If yeah. your solution is that a clown has to do this on a unicycle, so be it. <laughs> and what, what this means, that it, what, what usually happens is that people will give their first initial um, answers for a given question. The first 20 are fairly boring is fairly standard, what you would expect on a test paper. Mm. However, what, it, what gets interesting is once you run out of your initial things, then when you start peeling back some layers, you start getting creative. And, of course, they get outlandish, but then some people people start uh, grabbing the ideas that come up at uh, answer number 70 and they mash it back to answer number 10, and now there's an idea you yes, never thought of. that's right. And um, the idea of um, either fail quickly or fail fast and go again, it works. It works. There's a group called Notosh, and I think they're based in the UK, mm. and they taught me once about ideation Mm. so what we do is we go into the classroom and we give the kids a topic or Mm. a problem generally it's based around a problem of of technology or something out there say say there's asteroids going to hit earth what are you going to do about it yeah and the kids have x amount of time so it might be five minutes and they're in groups great big butcher paper there Mm. they have to write a hundred solutions and anything can be silly, clever, doesn't matter. It, 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 no judgment. Just write your idea on paper. Mm-hmm. And then we go from there and break up and say, okay, now each individual, what's your favourite six on this page? And then eventually you come down to one. And that then leads you into a, developing a prototype to solve that solution. Exactly. And you know what's Love really cool? That tool. You know what's really cool is that when then, you're then forced to do 100 implementation ideas yeah. as well it gets crazy but the thing is is that i love ideate, ideation it's something we actually do at physics okay. um, with our own, our own stuff we do okay. energy, oh, energy do every time yeah mm. and it's fun it's fun it is actually mm. fun and actually this gets me thinking like you know bring this sort of back to the topic to a degree because i know i'd go down this tangent but the this stem movement this project-based learning thing i know it's just there's all these different acronyms and bits and pieces and it just seems to me just making ideas work more or less. What was your thought about all, all this going on? Look, I understand where they're coming from in mm. linking and, and integrating science with maths, engineering, etc. I, I understand that concept of integration, but that's not going to work if you don't understand the science or if you don't understand the maths or if you don't understand the engineering strategies. So I'm all for integration, mm. but not at the expense of taking time out of learning the core. Now, someone might say to me, well, learn it at the same time. And I'd say, that's great if you have a teacher 
who is completely qualified with a science degree, an engineering degree, a maths degree, and a technology degree, who is completely upskilled in all of those areas and can integrate. Now, so we I, need to create a degree called the Swiss Army Knife. <laughs> like that mm, something right. like that and you know the other argument is well get t- train people okay well yes that's that's an option how do you train them to be that skilled in those four areas mm. like for science you know i'm very much the sort of person that believes that to teach science to do a science degree is your first step and then education is your second step yeah. and so really isn't isn't that uh, you know if you're a maths teacher you need to learn maths Mm. before you learn how to teach it so you know so that's where i come from and and stanislaw's perspective is is pretty much along the same line we're we're not saying no to integration but we're saying hang on get we we need to upskill our students in the basic core skills for those subjects and that's certainly something that you're doing with um, the teachers all the time. And you already described before we went on air about the work you've been doing in regional New South Wales mm. and right across Sydney. How do you, I, I often wonder when you speak with people like yourself, where you get time to sleep and where you get time to actually just have personal life? Because you are a dream, you're, you're brutal everywhere, you're all over the place. Oh, I know, I love it. Oh, look, mm. it gives me so much joy. I, I can't explain clearly enough how pleasurable it is to work for the I shouldn't say work to volunteer (laughs) for the association I get to meet the most amazing people Mm -hmm. and I get to talk about education and if you said what's my hobby I'd say teaching science yeah so given that it just all fits in together so yes I do get some sleep (laughs) occasionally Yeah, but it is fun. It's fun. It's very much so. I mean, um, even just today, I know you're at Clancy College, at Clancy Catholic College, but this morning you were at another school as well. Yes, I was at Mary McKillop at Wakeley. Yeah. Mm. So this morning we were doing programming Mm -hmm. together, and what we do is we collaborate. So we we work together Mm -hmm. to decide uh, using evidence-based practice what's the best way to to, um, teach the students that particular concept. Um, all, all of us in our system are very um, strongly involved in using a 5 E's approach for pedagogy. So we're always looking at how we can engage the students in the concept that we're about to teach. We don't just, okay, everyone, here's a PowerPoint, here's the content, off we go, now let's do a prac, because that's not very interesting. If a child is given the answer before they do it, why would they bother doing it? So we're very much into, well, let's engage their interest in this topic, then let them play with and explore an investigation where they're going to raise some questions of their own. Yeah. Then they come to you and say, can you tell me why the plane stays up? Why did the b- boomerang stay up? There? Well, it's funny you ask that. I'll tell you the answer, yeah. which is what science teachers love to do. Aren't we you? love to do that. But now the kids are asking first. Mm. And then we go on and do applications and um, elaborations, you know, something deeper. Yeah. So that's why I love collaborative planning because one mind is great, two or more is much better. And you know what I love is that no matter how many minds you can have on a given set of problems, sometimes things just go wrong. Oh, and of they course do, they do. And the lesson goes completely left field and the experiment you thought was going to be whatever it was, the reagents were ready and maybe they weren't. Have you ever had the situation? I bet you you have. <laughs> you oh, no, just... everything's always been perfect for me. Oh, good, good there you go. <laughs> I remember the time I nearly, um, this was in the days before risk assessment, I have to say, and I was a very new teacher. Mm -hmm. I'll never forget it because it was horrendous. And in a book, I read this procedure to make a compound of iron filings and sulfur. Oh, okay. Oh, you just heat it up in a crucible. I went, great. There's no such mention of do it in the fume cupboard. So I had all the kids around the bed, around the bench doing this, and of course, you know what happened. We got all this very nasty gas produced, so I had to evacuate everyone outside to, so that they didn't suffer from some sort of respiratory problem. Yeah. Um, and I went, oh my goodness! I, I, the problem was I had not read deeply enough, yeah. and this is one of the issues I think for new teachers when you see something in a book or you see something on a website, if you don't ask someone, have you done this, what are the issues with it, 
or luckily now we use risk assess so it would tell you although it wouldn't tell you unless you looked at the product that was be- being produced you know you really got to say well this is going to be made what's going to be the issue yeah. in that reaction uh, so that it's crucial for new young teachers to be able to network with more experienced teachers so that they learn they learn all about those sorts of issues. And that's exactly what you did yesterday, wasn't it? With the, with the, with the early, oh, to a degree, we had these uh, early, the last ten, yes. yeah, there was ten people, uh, not ten people. Thirty. Right? We had thirty people yesterday. Our early careers teachers' day. So these, this group of teachers probably have graduated between one and five years ago, and we come together. This this year we we've come together. And they love to share their experiences and they talk to each other about what worked and what didn't work. And we touch base on the the topics that they learned at uni Mm -hmm. and, well, okay, where are you now in that learning journey? What do you think now to what you thought one year ago or four years ago or five years ago? So we run that course every second year because in the other year we do a leadership course. So someone who's been teaching five to ten years might be looking to become accredited at higher accomplished or at lead level. So they come along and meet like-minded people and discuss ways that they could improve their practice or show evidence of working at that level. Um, and we have, we have a p- part of that course involves peer review. So they shadow each other. So they go to each other's schools and they get to see each other in practice. And that's very powerful stuff. Yeah, and actually, yeah. what I'm really excited to is I know that you, we've got one of the teachers from Clancy College who, at some point, is about to finish up her uh, lessons. I'm sure we'll hear a bell. Are there are bells at this school, I don't even know. Yes, there are. Oh, there you go. <laughs> so I know that they're lined up to run on down, and I know they'll walk through the door at any moment. Yes. And um, in fact, what we'll do is we may even take a short break, and when we come back, we'll have one of the teachers <laughs> here that um, very much can describe sort of things that goes down, you know, at, at the cold face of this school. Yes. And it'll be very interesting. It might so, be. um, Hold on, we're about to come back. We hope you've been enjoying the Physics Ed podcast. We love making science make sense. Why don't you book us for a science show or workshop in your school? If you're outside of Australia, you can connect with us via a virtual excursion. See our website for more. Lucy, thanks for joining on. Hi, it's good to be here. Yeah, no worries. So tell us a bit about what you've been doing at Clancy College. Um, so I've been a teacher here for two years now. Uh, it's my third and a half year of teaching in general. Um, and so I'm really loving it. I've started my first science stage six class this year. Oh, how was that? Oh, challenging, mm-hmm. really challenging, but it was just fantastic. It was a really good experience to Biology, start collaborating. Chemistry? Senior science. Senior science. is unfortunately uh, going to be no longer mm. as of next year. So it's good. We're going to miss that bang. course, aren't we? We are. Mm. Um, so I'm actually programming as well for the new course, the Investigating Science at the moment, with Margaret. Yeah, and that's why we wanted to chat with you to hear what this is actually like. I mean, knowing that, okay, you've been going for you know, three years, you're starting to find your feet and do stuff, and now you've got to totally change gears and redesign everything again. Well, fortunately, it's kind of been that the whole way through. There's always with teaching something new that comes up, something a new challenge that you want to take on. So you're constantly developing, changing, adjusting, adding a new technology, a new program. So this is just in another stride. Yeah. But it's been really good. Well, we were just talking about some of our favourite experiments that we've got to do, and Margaret was recounting this really great thing. I'm, I'm going to have to try this. That matchstick oh, experiment. Oh, yes. It was amazing. That's very cool. Like, in case just to bring yeah. up the speed, literally very thin shavings of a matchstick and finding the xylem. And those people that don't know what xylem is, think they're like tubes that, that move water from the roots up to the plant, up to the leaves, if you, in case you're wondering. Um, and so there's actually, out of interest, I mean, what were some of the experiments that just clearly the kids just went, love it, don't want to stop? Um, with my seniors this year, we've had a lot of experiments that I haven't mm. done before, so I've really enjoyed it. A lot of around Mother's Day, again, sticking oh. with the xylem, we trans. Uh, transported the dye up through the stems and so we had colourful plants for all of our mothers they loved Mm -hmm. that and now they're really critical now every time they go to a florist they're like oh miss I saw big bright blue plants I was like yeah (laughs) they're really onto it um Burning banksia pods was another really cool one. Oh, so right. we looked at different germinate, how um, pre-germination techniques, and so we lit one on fire, and that's always fantastic for yeah. kids and student and teachers alike. And teachers too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and 
thousand mum. My sort of actually cracks open yeah, the seeds. Yeah, crackle pop. Yeah. yeah. It definitely does. No, really, really cool. There's been some fantastic ones lately. Yeah. And so, I mean, what's it been like, I man? Obviously, this is your first school out of uni, yeah? Second. Second? Yeah. Oh, wow. I'm actually PE trained as well. Uh, how is that? And like, I mean, obviously, moving like health and you know, PDHPE for those people in mean, New South Wales, it's a very good program. And then you sort of then move into the science classroom. What was it like you know, working into where the ones and beakers and everything else were? Well, with PE, there are a lot of risks as well of being course. out on the playground. Um, so I was a lot. I was able to transfer a lot of my skills mm. um, in risk management and behaviour management as well, being both quite practical subjects. Mm. It was really good to have that link there. Mm. Um, but yeah, Bunsen burners, uh, gas taps was all very exciting to get involved with. Yeah. Um, my favourite thing was being able to lead all the teacher demos. Yeah, which as a as a kid, you sit there in class and you're like, oh, that's really cool. I want to do it. And I'm like, oh, this is awesome. Have around. So, <laughs> what's your favourite one? Like, I mean, if you had to just say, yeah, I don't know, there's a class that had been, and I'm throwing this to you, Margaret, as well. Like, if you if you had like something this afternoon where I know you got all the kids who really are into science and they just won't go away. And you had to just run an experiment which was like, you know, the kids are going to love, it's all, it seems to work every time. What would you do? Like, it doesn't have to be fancy materials. It really doesn't have to be. Just any random thing. What would you go, oh, I'm going to go raid the cupboards and I'm going to go get this thing. I know on the top of my head, my head right now, I'm thinking, frankly, it's the afternoon, so I'm thinking something to eat, so maybe making some sherbet. For me right now, if you're all right. If those people haven't done shed before, I'll probably make you get some bicarbonate soda, a bit of citric acid, some icing mixture. Uh, those people have been overseas in America because we know a lot of people in America. That's something powdered sugar, yeah? Get And get the kids to work out the right ratios um, and see which one tastes great and which one tastes like soap. Yeah, <laughs> it's risky. Yeah, but um, um, I, do? I don't think you can beat growing crystals. Oh, that's I like that as because that's really quite easy to set up mm. and... The students have to really work hard to trial different ways of getting a bigger crystal which, and a beautiful crystal. Which crystal would you grow? Because there's uh, lots you can do. Yeah, we just do alum. Okay. Alum is a fairly standard one. Mm-hmm. I know copper sulfate is beautiful and pretty, but I tend to avoid it um, mm. and go for that um, alum instead, so that's that's okay. But, yeah, crystal growing is fun. Yeah. I'm a little bit backyard science. I like here's a bunch of random equipment. I want you to create something that's going to be able to travel oh, cool. ten, the most distance. Let's have a race. Yeah. Um, I did it recently with my year eights, and it was really good to see some of the students that aren't as academic, that aren't as at your front of the class answering the questions, just excel with their problem solving and their hands-on ability. And my, I had a student who just blew the class out of the water. I gave him straws and bottle caps and bits of cardboard, and random things from leftover in the prep room. I said, righto. Mm-hmm. We're looking at forces. Let's create something that's going to, you know, push a force and we're going to move a distance. And his device travelled for 30 metres. I love those the mm. They're awesome. Like, two came to mind. Like, I know that one, one which worked really well. We've got a whole bunch of Lego at work and there's yeah. heaps of gears of different sizes. We just dump it all on the floor and go, guys, uh, you've got five minutes to grab whatever you can and the five minutes for the same stop and then we give them a challenge whether it's a tractor pull or whatever. Um, other ones are like, you know, the, the, it, it used to be called egg drop challenge but now with kids with allergies yes. we're going to do the water bomb challenge yeah. instead. <laughs> yeah. But um, that's just fun. So good. Mm. Yeah, we do a few off our um, two-level buildings. It's a shame we don't have higher. But it's really fun to see them. They all get really nervous just before they drop it. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I actually um, warned a high school class once that um, because they were so good at it, that I actually next time I'll, I'll actually weigh the materials. Yes. <laughs> I, need, I want a definitive answer who actually won. Yeah, no, <laughs> start getting really picky about I want to be able to see the egg from the outside of the container. <laughs> okay, so I guess actually just out of interest, I mean, what would be some advice that you give to people who are just starting off in their science teaching career? Um, my advice would be to embrace the expertise of other people. There's nothing better than collaboration to assist you in um, building your own professional development. Mm -hmm. Having a chat to someone, because like I said, I swapped KLAs, I came new to science and it was like fantastic, but there was a lot that I didn't know. There were a lot of gaps in my knowledge and I was working with people that were just so experienced and so open to discussions. I would go into their classes all the time, just how can I see you run this prac? I tried it with my class, I wasn't happy with it. Can I come in and have a look? Or I'm planning on running this. I've got this idea. Have you done it before? Because 
Mm-hmm. Right? There's no point in reinventing the wheel. I've mm-hmm. got all these fantastic ideas that I think no one could have possibly thought of before. But we've got such an experienced, diverse team here that there's so many people that says, oh, I've tried. at this school, I did it. It was fantastic. Let me find that for you. And then you can alter their resources and build upon. Mm. It's really good. That so, would be my suggestion. I'd happily venture that reciprocally you would bring other stuff to the classroom as well, having done yeah. a lot of uh, understanding in exercise movement studies, human movement, physiology, and, um, and then, like you said, the risk assessment. I know full well that one of the most di- difficult places to have kids not hurt themselves is the sports oval, like knees and ankles go all the time. Oh, with a couple of cricket bats. Yeah, a science classroom is actually one of the safest places in the buildings, so beyond English perhaps. But like it's just, yeah, yeah like it's it very much so. I mean, and actually that means that flipping it the other way, uh, Margaret, like, advi- I guess uh, advice for people who are leading others. I mean, like a lead, like, you know, getting, you know, getting people together. You've been doing this for many years. I guess the advice is that what have you learned out of your time doing this? Oh, that's a good question. I think... I think building a relationship with people is the most important and, and having that uh, uh, trusting and open relationship where I can say, yeah, I don't know, yeah, and not feel that anyone is saying, well, you should know. Well, no, I don't. Um, I don't know everything and it's, okay, let's work it out together. So it's bringing this, the skills that a leader has or a more experienced person has to the table is as equally important as new people coming in and bringing in their new new and fresh ideas. So we really need a clean table to start with and everyone puts on the table what they can add and we build from there rather than having a top-down... Um, it's not leadership when it's top-down and you're being told what to do. I mean, if Lucy came in here and she was told, do this, do that, do something else, yes. she yeah, wouldn't be the on. fine teacher that she is today. So... Uh, and all credit to her team here. That's they've yeah. uh, they've been wonderful team and working that's together. And really modelled from the top. Like Grace, our coordinator, is just so open to um, advice and encouragement. I'm saying, oh, I've created this. She's oh, fantastic. Thank you so much. Mm. That's amazing. Mm. Anything new we find, she embraces. Um, and she's the first person to say, you know, oh, I don't know as much about biology. Not her strength area. She's a physics teacher. So she'll come and ask questions all the time. And it's really good to see that modelled Modeled. because mm. then it's something that younger teachers take on. Mm. And it's also something that, like, I've got a prac teacher now and I'm trying to model that as well with all of my failures. But also to the kids to be able to say, I don't know everything. Let's figure this out yeah, because totally it trickles down. Mm. I totally agree. In fact, um, someone once told me, I wish I could remember who it was, but I do remember them actually saying, no matter what, leave your ego at the door. Yeah. yeah, and it does matter. It totally matters. It does. Um, just be real and normal. Yes, mm-hmm. and kind to each other. We are all under the pump all the time. You know, no one's sitting yeah. around twiddling their thumbs from early morning to late at night. Mm. So if we start being critical and judgmental of each other, well, where does that take anyone? Yeah, and then sadly, you see that happen sometimes in our various Twitter chats around education. And every now and then, someone gets beer in their bonnet, and off it goes. Off it goes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's okay. Yeah, and you see that it happen. Be, yeah. And it's a real shame because sometimes I mean, I, a great education chat that I thought, oh, my, I'd love to just be involved. Um, now I don't. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm not going to add my opinion on that one and shut down. Yeah, that's mm. it, and that's exactly it. And that's actually something we were talking about before. We were talking about the 100 ideas early before you got to come into the club, yeah. into here. It's just ideation is very much better. Throw ideas around until something sticks. Mm. Um, yeah. And that's what works. we do. Well, and and I'm just going to add to that. That's mm. where Stanners were is trying to provide venues for people who feel a bit isolated or maybe they don't have uh, a network that they feel that they can work with in their own school, for whatever reason, they're the only teacher there, for example, mm. um, you know, come along to the Stanners were stuff, uh, events, stuff, to our events and meet other people who yeah. are as, as engaged and interested and experienced and, you know, learn through that opportunity. And I'm going to throw down that it'd be 100% the people who are listening to a podcast like this are the motivated types. Yes, in the first place. yes they are. So um, <laughs> with that in mind, a perfect segue, it's just so been said, um, how will they get in touch with Stanislaw? Okay, we have mm-hmm. a website. Mm-hmm. It's stanislaw.asn.au. Mm-hmm. So S-T-A-N-S-W? Yes, Yes, uh, you can go to that website and see all of the, all of the events that we've got to offer, and we've got a whole range of pe- conferences organised for next year already, and we'll be focusing on Year Twelve, the new Year Twelve syllabuses, as well as touching on some Year Eleven as well for people who missed this year. 
So that would be a good place to start. And that will have information about becoming a member or how to become a member. Registration is open now. We close registration, I think, at the end of March next year. So it is a limited time frame. Uh, that's so that everybody can get all of the resources because we, we provide four journals a year and four newsletters and four e-news. So we need to have that sort of tied off earlier in the year. But come along. It's tax deductible. It's not very expensive, really, in the big scheme of things. And you can always have a school faculty membership if you didn't want to become an individual member. So that way someone at the school gets all the information about what's going on. They can pass it around. No worries. And we'll throw that, as usual, in the show notes as well. So if you, um, you, didn't, you didn't pick that up or if you're walking the dog or driving the car, you'll have that, that somewhere around to pick that up. But, look, thank you very much, Margaret and Lucy, for popping in. Have a bit of a chat. And um, thanks again also to Cap, uh, Clancy Catholic College for having me in this room yes. to, to finally <laughs> track Perfect Margaret room. down. <laughs> much appreciated. We'll catch you another time. Thanks, Ben. Thank, thank you so you. much. This is the Physics Ed Podcast. We're all about science, ed tech and more. To see 100 fun free experiments you can do with your class, go to physicseducation.com.au. That's physics spelled F-I-Z-Z-I-C-S. And click 100 free experiments. And there you go. We were listening to Margaret Shepherd from the Science Teachers Association of New South Wales, as well as Lucy Hawkins from Clancy Catholic College, two highly motivated educators. You can really tell. And how cool would it be to be one of their students? i tell you what, I mean... It makes you want to go back, doesn't it, <laughs> in some ways. But, hey, I definitely got a lot out of the conversation. I hope you did too. Uh, number one for me was definitely get, you know, get kids to really understand to be open to risks, to try and teach them, you know what, it's okay to occasionally fail and, uh, you know, model it, definitely model it. You know, say, hey, we're going to just try this stuff out. We're going to see what happens. And that very much helps kids understand that that's actually what the real world is like. So definitely teach kids to be open to risk. Uh, number two for me was it can be the little things Things that matter. Uh, Margaret recounted this, uh, you know, great experiment using matchsticks and microscopes. What a brilliant way to show xylem! And uh, I must say, I'm going to have to go try this out because I really want to go check this out myself. So there you go. I challenge you. Go look at the little things. Use some microscopes. Use some magnifiers. Go check that thing out. And number three, and this is something Lucy definitely was about, share with your teachers that, you know what, you're not quite sure how to do a particular experiment. Or even say, look, I totally stuffed up. Try Probably don't do this uh, experiment this way. It means that you've created a collegiate atmosphere and it's from there that, well, people will help you and you can help them and you have much better workplace and the kids benefit and as a result. This is the Physics Ed Podcast. We're excited about science. Grab a copy of our new book, Be Amazing, How to Teach Science the Way Primary Kids Love, from our website. Just search Be Amazing Book. It's available in hard copy and e-book. Go to physicseducation.com.au. That's physics spelled F-I-Z-Z-I-C-S. When it comes down to it, you can definitely be getting your students into science in so many different ways. And if you're in primary school, if you're an elementary teacher, you can be getting your kids to judge content being produced by scientists. What do I mean by that? Check out the Flame Challenge. Check out Alan Alder's Flame Challenge, which is all about answering a question really, really well and having 11-year-olds grade it. It's really, really interesting. And only last week we got to speak, well, one of the winners. So... Thinking about what they enjoy and how they think and, and what they really respond to as well, I think that's really important. I was Dr. Joanna Howes who had this brilliant answer for what is energy, which was last year's question for the Alan Howes Flame Challenge. Now, this year's question is what is climate? So, why not get involved? If you're a science communicator, perhaps throw your hat in the ring and say what is climate on the Flame Challenge. So, go check out the Flame Challenge's website. And if you're a class, if you have 11 year olds, perhaps your kids could be the judge. Thanks for listening to the Physics Ed Podcast. Sign up now for our fortnightly email newsletter. It's loaded with details on new experiments you can do, STEM teaching articles, new gadgets, exclusive offers, and upcoming events. Go to physicseducation.com.au. Scroll to the bottom and add your email. And that brings us to the end of yet another Physics Ed podcast, but there's still more to come. We are going to do a slight change in format because as we go over the summer, it's time to well, do something a little bit different. But until then, you've been listening to me, Ben Newsom for Physics Education, and you've been listening to the Physics Ed podcast. I'll catch you next week. You've been listening to another Physics Ed podcast. We're excited about science. Subscribe to us on iTunes to download the next episode as soon as it's released. And don't forget, for hundreds of ideas, free experiments, our new Be Amazing book and more, 
go to physicseducation.com.au.